announced the Rock and Tours in our iHeartRadio album release party for Help Us Stranger. I'm Amber Miller. Thanks for listening at home or watching at LiveXLive.com. If you're following along on socials, the hashtag would be I Heart the Rock and Tours. Gentlemen. Brendan, hi. Hello. Hello, Jack. Hello. Hello. I know you need a second. You've been doing a thing. So I want to kind of rewind a little bit and go back to the beginning of this chapter, this new chapter for the Rock and Tours. It was kind of sly how you announced it was happening. It was almost buried in a press release uh, surrounding the 10th anniversary release of, uh, of Consolers of the Lonely, right? right, right. Um, that for us is front page, big headline news. And you were like, we're just going to tuck it in here and see if anybody notices. I'm sure that was by design. What, what, were you trying to trick us? What was going on there? It's like, a, I don't know, baby steps. Everything with baby steps, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, relationships, murder, rock and roll bands, <laughs> baby steps. The antithesis of hype with the Rock and Tours. I love it. Um, can you pinpoint one particular moment, a spark, a conversation, maybe a riff that was the impetus for this ball to get rolling again? One thing. I think it might have been when uh, I stopped by Jack's place to listen to some some uh, some of his new solo album, and he was playing. You know, it wasn't quite he wasn't quite done yet, and he played a song called "Shine the Light." And he, and he said, you know, I think, you know, this is nice and all, but I think this might make a better raconteur song. And so uh, I was thrilled. I loved the song, too, so that worked out great. But, <laughs> but you know, yeah, I, I kind of went home and started writing stuff and squirreling it away and, you know, and in, in hopes of another album, actually, you know, in hopes that we'd all be free, uh, the four of us. I mean, Patrick was living in Los Angeles at the time, and... LJ was on tour regularly, so was Patrick, and we were all really busy, so it didn't seem very likely, but it was promising. Yeah. But here we are. <laughs> we're not mad about that at all, that's for sure. Um, I want to talk about the concept of home, because for, for most people, for so many people, it's this really um, nostalgic, romantic, important thing, home. Uh, home for both of you is Detroit, as it is for me. Oh, nice. um, Ten years in, in ten years later, with the Rock and Tours, uh, what does Detroit mean to the band in 2019? Is it a good relationship? Is it a bad relationship? Is it complicated? What, where does that new, work into the fabric? It's, it's a new relationship. Yeah, it's new. It's, it's a lot great. of new relationships. Super positive, and uh, Detroit's just blowing up right now. It's a huge renaissance in the town. And Third Man Records, our label, has built a pressing plant there. <laughs> that's cool. Though, so. That's been going strong and. It's pretty amazing to you know, the places we played our first shows in the Cask Order a couple blocks away now. We're, we're pressing this new record at our own pressing plant. So that's pretty amazing. And if you go and visit, you can actually like go and look at the operation, and I highly yeah, recommend it. It's the only record store that. in the world where you can see the records being pressed through the window in the back of the store. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. <laughs> And as somebody who makes records, uh, there had been this crazy delay. Like, if you wanted to put a record out, so you were like, I'm, I'm just going to I'm gonna do that myself. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, <laughs> cut out the middleman. I'm going to make that yeah, happen. Yeah, we basically had to build our own plant because there's so much demand and, and, and very little space in, on the old machines. So it's uh, every little bit helps. And there's little tiny plants popping up all over the country and all over the world. We just visited one in New Zealand the other day. This uh, place bought a, a one press, and they're starting up an operation. And it's really cool because there's, there's lots more to be done. There's still a ton of demand. Expansion. 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 Um, if you're just joining us, this is our iHeartRadio album release party for Help a Stranger with the Rock and Tours. That hashtag, I Heart the Rock and Tours. Uh, so there's this video Thanks, of you guys. I totally just forgot. So what? Is, what did great. you just forget? That you love the Rock and Tours? That you heart the Rock and Tours? <laughs> in case anybody forgot. So, video of you guys um, in a car. You. Uh, took over, almost pirated this like FM transmitter signal so you could listen to a song you had just mixed in the car. So I'm a radio geek. Um, I'm a music geek. I want to talk about that and I want to hear a little bit about your relationship with music and cars because I think that that's a relationship that, that is really deep-seated. Yeah. The, uh, well, there was a uh, LJ here on the bass. He, uh, 
he bought me a, a years like 10 years ago he bought me a present for Christmas which is an FM transmitter so in my studio you can uh, take the mix off of the board and you can transmit it to an FM frequency and go listen on the radio somewhere so we go out to the car and uh, tune in that same on, it's like a, pick a frequency that nobody's using and it only travels like 150 feet or something right so we go out to the car and we're listening to the mix of the song but I have a walkie talkie in the car and I can tell the engineer back in the studio turn the kick drum up Turn more reverb on the vocals here in the chorus. So we mix, most of my songs are mixed in the car nowadays. Right? That, is a, that is really incredible technology. Great, except yeah. for now you've told the entire world. So. It's, all, it's also a 72 Pinto wagon. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Far um, from it. So you did it? Okay, it's a it. Tesla. You tattled on him, you're a rat, you're a rat. Um, you just did it live, uh, and it was a little more contemporary sounding, but the intro for Help Me Stranger sounds like, I don't know, maybe 20s music or something. Uh, where did that come from? Where you're like, we need this in this song, and this is how it's going to start. That was Jack Lawrence over here again. We're just going to keep calling you out. I'm going to keep calling him out over there. He had just gotten out of prison, and... Um, it was a cold and stormy night. He was doing uh, overdub in the studio while we were working on Help Me Stranger, the song, and he just sort of picked up a guitar and was pretending to be a 1930s singer singing the song, and we were all in the control room with our mouths on the floor, so we just loved it, so we had to put it on the record as the intro. It's got a stick, right, yeah. Are you going to make us wait another decade or so for more? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, that's a very oh, honest that's answer. <laughs> <laughs> You no, can... man, I think uh, we, we, we had over 30 songs we were working on when we did this record, so there's a lot to be finished if people want it. I don't know. We're out so of time. I'm... So that being said, sounds like 10 more years. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from your favorite artist. While you're here, check out these other videos.